You're listening to the Orchestra Teacher Podcast. Welcome, everyone, to the Orchestra Teacher Podcast. This is Dr. Charles Laux, and I am here with our special guest this week, starting off our three episodes, uh, Ms. Katie O'Hara Labrie. Welcome, Katie, to the Orchestra Teacher Podcast. Oh, I'm so excited to be here. Yeah, it's great that you're here. Um, we've talked about this for a little little while, and uh, we've met each other a few times at ASTA and things like that, and uh, now you're here. I'm so glad that you're able to join us today and uh, talk about all the wonderful things you're doing. So um, I guess first, just tell us a, a little bit about yourself and where you're from and your background so people can get, can kind of understand more about yeah. you. Yeah. Yeah, so I grew up in uh, North Carolina, in Raleigh, and um, I started cello in the fourth grade, um, and that was it, you know, like, that was my thing. Um, I grew up uh, with very musical parents, so my dad played um, Grateful Dead, Beatles, rock and roll, that sort of thing at home. My mom sang at church. It was just always part of the fabric of our lives. Very cool. Um, yeah, it really was. And, uh, then I went to St. Olaf College in Minnesota. Yeah. Uh, Minnesota. <laughs> yeah. Um, which was fantastic. Uh, so that was with, uh, Steve Amundsen, uh, was the director. Wonderful. And, um, and yeah, I, I knew from an early age that music ed was, what I wanted to do like that was just clear I mean once you put a baton in my hand I was like done <laughs> perfect um yeah so then I went on I moved to Virginia uh after college and I've been I was teaching in Fairfax County for about the first 15 plus years great of my district. career great district were you there, you were there yeah. the whole time yeah the whole nice. time yeah. um yeah. kind of did a little bit of everything middle high elementary um middle school is definitely my jam um that's yeah. that's where I ended up and honestly I would have stayed there forever um that was always what i thought i was going to do and but as life happens it you know does. sometimes things uh change um um and i have a, a condition that i didn't know i had but i, I do uh mm -hmm. called ehlers danlos syndrome and it's mm -hmm. a connected tissue disorder and it just causes things to go out of whack from time to time and it makes oh. it hard for that consistency right. of you know right. being in the classroom for a full day like i can go in and, do, and do clinics yeah. and i can you know spend a couple hours here or there um, but the full day was yeah. just not, okay. not possible anymore. Oh, so yeah, yeah that was, you know, a little I, I'm sure that was really hard, uh, <laughs> mentally and just emotionally trying to go through that. And you know, the, the, the thing that you love to do the dream, but seems like you're still living the dream in a different way. It, they really, I, I really do feel lucky yeah. in, in that. So when I was teaching, I started writing um, music for my students. And I think that's how a lot of um, composers who are teachers slash composers, you know, mm -hmm. work. It's, it's, oh, I need to teach my cellos <laughs> extensions and hmm, I need a Hanukkah tune. All right. And yeah. I need to be great too. Here's Hanukkah dances done, you know? Nice. So, <clears throat> so that's how that kind of started. Um, I kind of got my start with Bob Phillips over at Alfred. Um, it was a great, um, editor and still continues to be a great mentor and friend. Um, and from that, you know, I had a piece here, a piece there, you know, just, it was kind of what I did, you know, over the summer or over winter break, I would write a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, uh, but then when I stopped uh, working, I had some time after a surgery and I was like in bed for a long period of time and mm -hmm. I had my laptop on my lap and I just, <laughs> you know, I had those creative juices flowing. Right. And I, I wanted to still, put this energy into something. So I did. Um, and I was able to <clears throat> tra uh, transform my career into that of a, a composer and now a publisher. That's amazing. That's amazing. Yeah. Um, you have so many pieces out right now. Um, and, and the catalog <clears throat> just keeps growing and growing and growing like exponentially, <clears throat> which is probably really exciting. It is. Yeah. In the first, um, 10 years, I had 11 pieces over the course of 10 years. Um, and then in my 11th year, I had, I think, 11 pieces in that one year. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so having more time helps for sure. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. Um, but did, you ever, did you ever think that, I mean, you have a lot of original pieces too. Did you ever think that you could write so many um, no. and have so many different original ideas? I don't know. Like, uh, can you tell us a little bit like how something strikes you because I have these ideas, like pieces I want to write. And it's like, then I sit down at the keyboard or with my violin. I'm like, I don't know if I can do that. I have like, like a few things I've done, but like, how, how do you do it? 
I mean, it varies yeah. uh, for sure. I mean, I wrote a piece, uh, I think two weekends ago in a weekend, like it was just like, it Ooh. just came, it comes. And and that's, those ones are always like the hit, like they, they yeah. just work, it works. Um, and then there's some that take, you know, I go back month after month or year after year and just kind of like, oh yeah, I wrote that theme a while ago. Do I yeah. want to play around with it? So it, it depends. But um, I, I joke that a lot of my writing happens in the car. Um, oh, okay. I, um, I have a piece of Sky Suite that I was driving, you know, just down this long stretch of road and I turned a corner and then all of a sudden, like the clouds opened up, right? And you could see those sun rays yeah. and just this, da, da, dee, da, 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 you know, came into my head. And so I went down, or, or actually what I did is I grabbed my phone mm-hmm. and I had a stoplight. Yeah. Uh, and I uh, do the audio recording. Right, you said, and I just sing into, into my it. phone. Yeah. And then when I uh, get home, I you know transcribe it, and hopefully I remember the harmonies because you can't sing harmonies when you're yeah right right yeah. That's that's the tricky part. That's really cool. Did um I so I have to ask then, and uh, I ask most of my composer friends, are you a Sibelius or Finale or Muse score person? What's your what's your tool of choice? I am a finale person. I've been a finale person for 20 some odd years. Yeah, same. You were talking about um, your, your, the creative process. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. So a lot of times it comes from you know, various things. So sometimes it comes from students um, and students needs. Um, and even though I'm not in the classroom, I still, you know, I'm very connected with all my my teacher friends. Mm-hmm. And you know, OK, we need this. We need that. You know, um, so it comes from there. Um, and yeah, otherwise it's just ideas and it, it just, I don't know, they just pop in my head. Um, one that's of amazing. them that's kind of fun, I like to share the story is um, Camelot Quest opens with this little bum, 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 bum. And mm-hmm. uh, that actually I stole from my son. <laughs> nice. <laughs> he, was, he was like seven or eight at the time and he was just playing the same thing on, you know, ad finagum, you know, just over and over. And I, um, went ahead and said okay well, let me write a little melody over this and so that's how that got started. that's awesome yes <laughs> so. it, it, i guess you just never know where it could come from yeah yeah, yeah. now he wants royalties right <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's, yeah that's that's how it works with this with kids um well awesome that is so cool and then um so now you uh you, you publish with different a whole bunch of different publishers and carl fisher and uh uh excelsior now pretty much all of them yeah pretty much everyone <laughs> yeah which was really neat i mean as yeah. i you know got more well known i was able to connect with more publishers mm-hmm. and what's been really great about that is every publisher and every editor does things a little differently so i've gotten okay. to learn different t- tricks and tips from you know different people um along the way which has really been helpful for me becoming um an editor myself yeah yeah um, and so uh, tell us a little bit about this new orchestra division at Randall Standridge Music. That's uh, um, a company that you're working for now. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So Randall, if you don't know, um, is definitely uh, more, you know, set in the band world for sure. He's been okay. a band guy around had, for a had, long had, time. Yeah. I hadn't heard of it at all until you yeah. mentioned I was like, I don't, this is a new company. And apparently not. Yeah, no. So yeah. Randall himself, like if you go to Midwest, there is a line down the exhibit oh. hall 24 seven to see Randall and just meet him. He's just okay. such, um, such a kind person, such a, you know, person that's looking out for us as music educators, um, he was a music educator as well. Cool. Um, and so in 2020, he stopped teaching and um, just became a full-time uh, composer. Okay. Yeah, great time to <laughs> yeah, do well, that. Yeah, right? I mean, it's like January. Who, who, didn't, who didn't want to quit in 2020? <laughs> right, right. It was, it was January, though. It was, it was a precursor. Power to um, power so, to but he, um, yeah, he moved on to um, starting this company. And initially, it was just his own compositions, just because he's pr- very prolific. It's like a Tuesday. So he writes a grade two piece mm-hmm. in like an hour. Like he's just that, that good. Wow. And um, then two years ago, he started taking on other uh, band composers and creating a band catalog beyond his own uh, music. Um, and then this year, uh, he, you know, expanding to orchestra we have dreams you know five years down the line you know what what other you know catalogs we're gonna grow into um so mm-hmm. it's very you know on the cusp of this um company kind of becoming something because right now it's randall his husband me and like one or two others and uh it's um it, it's really fun because i get to get uh experience and kind of hit my hands on all the different aspects of the production of a piece cool mm-hmm. um, 
So it's more than just like the editor. Nice. Wow. That's, wow. that's really great. That's really yeah. great. And um, you have some um, new works uh, with Brian Balmages and his catalog. Yeah. Um, Brian has been an amazing mentor um, over the last few years. And um, so when he made that move over to Alfred, uh, his new company is Make Music Publications. Mm -hmm. And just to clarify for people, it is a print catalog. Um, you know, okay. Some people think Make Music, they think, oh, it's only going to be in you know, what format. used to be called smart music. Yeah, um, it'll, but it'll be but it'll be both, right? It'll, it'll be available, be like yeah, yeah, digitally okay. and okay. and and in print. Wow. Um, and so, um, you know, I do just little bits of kind of freelance stuff for him, doing proofing and cool. Boeing's fingerings, that sort of thing. Yeah. So, yeah, and those, I know those kind of know, things are fun to do. Yeah. They are, and then yeah. of course everybody says, "Oh, I don't like these bonds." Right? <laughs> <laughs> You're, you're never going to please everybody. I mean, exactly. As a, as a central elements <laughs> clinician, I get, well, the book should have this, and we should do this. And, you should. and I was like, okay, uh, the every book and every publication, everything that is put out in print is a sacrifice of some sort to try to make the most people happy, but it's not going to make everybody happy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> exactly. So definitely, uh, definitely understand that. Very, very cool. And then um, you have an awesome session and a website in t like uh, dedicated to – uh, it's called practice with purpose. Um, mm -hmm. What's the big idea? An idea stands for something. What does idea stand for? So idea stands for. Oh, I'm going to give it away. No, no, oh. yeah, I will. No, I will. Well, it's I will. on the website. I know. I do. <laughs> uh, it's um, I stands for identify. So identify. we're teaching kids to identify a small part in music, not just playing through the whole song, right? Why not? D, why, yeah. why shouldn't they play the whole? Yeah. <laughs> Great. And then D is decide. Um, okay. So they're deciding what musical concept they're working on. So, you know, this part is tricky because of the dynamics mm -hmm. or because of the rhythm or because of what. Um, and then E, uh, e, yeah, that's how you spell it. Uh, e is execute. And so that is execute a variety of strategies. And so what my um, colleague Tracy and I, she's the kind of band side to this, uh, cool. this website is we've created these strategy guides. Um, and there's some general strategies that I'm sure you do are already, you know, simple mm -hmm. things like, you know, using a metronome or chunking it, you know, making mm -hmm. smaller chunks. But kids, but kids then, don't know what to do. Exactly. Right. You know, so or, or you've for... done it, but they don't feel like <laughs> they can do that at home too. Yes. Right? Yes. Fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. And then it goes into specific strategies. So if you're working on tone, what should you be doing? If you're working on rhythm, what are some tricks that you can do? Um, and so, and then A, of course, is analyze. And so it's just an acronym to get them thinking yeah. about practice. But I love it. I love it. And so um, the website for that is? Practicewithpurpose.net. .net. Practicewithpurpose.net. Cool, cool, cool. Everybody should check that out. Um, yeah. Yeah, I've been doing some, uh, one of my assignments is a practice vlog mm -hmm. where they have to actually um, tell me what they're going to work on. Uh, identify an area, tell me what they're working on, whether it's a tone or, it's, you know, notes or rests or rhythms or whatever it might be. And then show me a five minute practice sample. And I tell them it should be a sample, not like all of your practice in five minutes, mm -hmm. but a practice sample, because I like them to to realize that when they practice, they shouldn't sound good. So I said, I'm not grading you on the, the quality of your playing, grading you on the quality of your process. And mm -hmm. so for me, it's always something that tries to get them thinking uh, like you are with the idea of just thinking about goals and setting goals. And I tell the kids, I said, no, you don't have an hour a day to practice, especially my, you know, kids that are taking 800 AP classes and all that kind of stuff. So I said, you need to focus on finding something to do. You're not going to sound good while you do it. You should sound better as you go, but you need to, you need to be thinking about setting goals for yourself and, isolating some time rather than just slopping through your music and say, well, I practiced. You didn't really accomplish anything. So setting goals for my kids is really, really important. And it sounds like this is uh, something that a lot of teachers could, could use with their kids too. Um, I know you have some posters on there. The kids, there's, teachers yeah, there's can print assignment. out. Yeah. yeah, tons of different assignments that you can edit. Like we, we left them so that you could edit them and make them your own. But I did exactly what you were just saying. Like when Flipgrid was kind of the it thing, even pre-pandemic. It's still, um, still it with me. <laughs> yeah. Because we're yeah, using it, it for that. Yeah, yeah exactly. That's, yeah. It, that's what we would do. And so and I would even do that where they would kind of come up with their 
IDEA, you know, their, or we actually call it their OMGs, their Obtainable Musical Goals. I love it. Um, and so they would actually flip grid just that so that the other kids could see what they were doing. They didn't mm -hmm. have to play at that point. Okay, I mean, they would also have to do it. that. Yeah. They were just talking about it so that the kids could say, oh, you know what? That's a great idea. I should try that love for it. that spot too. Yeah, and I might do that too because sometimes kids are a little squeamish to practice in front of each other. Mm -hmm. um, I'll, although uh, it's interesting to see what I love about Flipgrid is the ability to see view counts. And I leave I leave the, pr the practice vlogs open for everybody. So, you know, mm -hmm. some of my stronger players, they're getting 50, 60, 70 views from a class of 25 or 30 or 40. And it's like, mm -hmm. wow, you know, that's um, they're, 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 they're trying to find the model they want to you know, follow, yeah. which is pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. that's really awesome. Um, and then... Uh, I mean, what, uh, what other, uh, I guess, what other challenges are you seeing now? I mean, cause, uh, the, the hard part is, you know, you're, um, you know, you're, st are you still do, you're still doing clinics, uh, here and there yeah. and some guest conducting and whatnot. Um, that's really great. And then so what are some of the challenges that you, the other challenges that you're, you're seeing, um, with like music education right now and, um, or any, any concerns or topics that you're, you know, interested in, in talking well, about. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, there's a couple things that I kind of seeing as reoccurring um, themes lately. I'm on the K-12 committee um, with ASTA. And so Great. we've been talking about a couple of different things. Um, and so, you know, one is getting out of this post-pandemic, you know, world or into this post-pandemic world, I guess. Yeah. And, right. <laughs> um, and, and how to, you know, engage the kids, um, you know, is, is a big thing. Um, um, I do like these kind of, Sarah Ball and Amy Clement kind of model of gamifying, you know, things and trying yeah. to make kids, you know, just yeah. getting them however you can. You know, Trick them into learning. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, that, that's a lot of it. Um, yeah. I did a session at ASTA this last year on that um, called how to, what was it? How to, how to win students and influence rehearsals or might be the other way around. Uh, okay. But, uh, but it was, you know, based off the Dale Carnegie kind of how to win friends and influence people, but just, it's all about the different aspects of kind of mixing up your rehearsal to uh, engage the kids. Very cool. Um, and that could be as simple as, you know, mixing up your seating or it could be, you know, more involved, like mixing up games and things for different technique um, nice. skills. Nice. Yeah. Um, yeah, so there's that. Um, another topic that's been, you know, uh, big in the publishing world is, you know, making sure that we have voices of, you know, representing all different types of people yes. um, in the composing world. And so one of the things I really like about Randall and Randall's company is that um, our tenants are creativity, quality, and diversity. Wow, great um, motto. Mm -hmm. It is. It's a great motto, but mm -hmm. uh, it's it really is just it's just truth, you know, too. Um, yeah, yeah. When we got our submissions and uh, this last year and went through all of them and narrowed it down, we looked at what we had. It was a diverse panel of people, you know, right. we weren't looking at who the composers were when we were listening to the music. Mm -hmm. We were just looking at the music. And when you just look at the music, you really do find this, you know, wide range of people. We have people from um, different countries. We have different people, uh, you know, different genders, different um, backgrounds um, sure. of all sorts. Um, That's great. We have neurodiverse, any, anything. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I'm a big fan of music for music's sake, you know, so mm -hmm. pick the best music and it's going to be diverse for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. That's I awesome. Mean, yeah. And then um, I'd, I'd like to, uh, if you're okay with it, maybe uh, pull up uh, mm -hmm. a few of your pieces. I have my uh, my trusty iPad here. And I'm trying to, uh, I, and a lot of you, most of your pieces are on the, um, where you could do score and sound type yeah. thing. Yes. Yeah, you know, and, um, you know, of course there's always the ads at the beginnings. That's, that's, <laughs> a, that's just the publishers, you know, uh, and I get that. But, um, I, so I think I found uh, one This came out this year. It's called dragon chase. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us a little bit about dragon chase. All right. Well, I mean, everybody always wants to emulate dragon hunter, right? Like <laughs> that is the gold standard of all <laughs> elementary and middle school music. Right. Yeah. Um, and it's not possible. It is what it is. And it's, it's yeah. the best, right? Yeah. Um, but what's what's so great about it is it's a one octave E minor dragon tune. So nice. I feel like everybody is trying to write a one octave E minor dragon tune. Yeah. So I said, all right, I'll throw my hat in the ring. Yeah, no, true. there's there's a whole bunch of E minor out there. And um, I heard a concert re recently um, and it was pretty much all E minor dragony mm -hmm. pieces it's like wow i didn't realize there are so many dragon hunter dragon slayer dragon chase you know, yeah and i, I don't know what else you got what else chase. can you come up with right? but that's yeah, cool. I, 
I had Dragon Chase this year, and Chris Thomas had, uh, I think, Legend of the Dragon Chasers, you know, yes, the sir. same year. <laughs> so, you know, what can you do? <laughs> well, uh, it's okay. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to play a, a little bit of it. And uh, if you want to um, pop in the middle, let me know, and I'll, I'll turn my volume down. But okay. uh, here's Dragon Chase by Katie O'Hara Labrie. Kind of that back and forth, like yeah. You know, I was like, gonna say, I, I like, the, I like, the, boom, 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 boom. Yeah, yeah, I like the contrapuntal, and the kids like doing that too because it's like, who's better, you know? Violins yeah, are, violins or viola, cello, bass, like, right? And yeah, so, um, changes. you know, voicing wise, uh, it's a lot of uh, doubling in the cello bass, which is which is nice. Mm -hmm. Um, and uh, well, I think it's mostly it's mostly doubled in cello bass, which is good, um, especially if you have a few bass players and you need more, which I I think that's a problem of a lot of uh folks out there um but yeah i like it uh and it's it sounds like a lot of fun and i know that the, when the publishers play it it never sounds as cool as it does when the kids play it no offense <laughs> publisher orchestras but no 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 yeah, well yeah. and then there's you know what i would do actually if i played it as i for the kids i would uh do that little thing on youtube where you can do it at 1.25 speed yes. you know just to kind of get them get, a little bit more right you when, know. You, when you play it back yeah yeah yeah, yeah. So yeah, I think they like that. I, I've used um, some of the scores, you know, score plays in my in my rehearsals too. Like when the kids just need like a little boost, or they want like they want to feel mm -hmm. bigger, especially with a smaller group, you can reduce it down and put it on a slower tempo too, and and have them mm -hmm. you know play along a little bit even with it. So sometimes it gets it in their head a little bit better. But um, I I do share uh, when I can I share playlists with my students. Uh, most most of the publishers allow me to, so I'll just share a, every orchestra. I have a playlist, and then when we're working on that piece. I put the, the tunes in that playlist and I share it out. I text it out, email it out, and it's it's there for them. And and the playlist never changes, so the link always stays the same. I just change the pieces throughout the year. Oh, so it's a really good way for the kids to listen. And then we've done some other listening things too on YouTube where they uh, uh, just basically I, I'll talk about well, Baroque, you know, like we'll do different music time periods. And so each month I'll have a, a Baroque, time, uh, Baroque playlist with some pieces that I think that they would find interesting. And then... Um, I'll have them answer some questions about it and just kind of just to get the kids listening to something other than the stuff they might listen to normally, you know? So it's no, yeah. yeah. I always uh, would do a listening um, activity, usually like over like winter break or something when I wasn't going to give them like a, pr a practice journal or anything um, where, and some of it was stuff I would assign, but I would also leave blank spaces for them to, you know, fill in stuff that they were listening to. And I would learn what the kids were into um, yeah. and it was a good way to connect with them. Yeah, it really is. Uh, yeah. Do you have um, a favorite grade two or three piece that you want me to try to pull up? Well, I was thinking, actually, I'd, or... I'd love for you guys to hear um, a piece from our catalog um, that's not mine, necessarily. Oh. Uh, this one's called Santa the Barbarian. Oh, ah, okay. Um, so if you want to look that one up, it's by Randall, but you got to make sure you find the string one, um, not the band one. Work it. Um, okay, I'm, I'm doing the search right now yeah so. do, yeah do the search right now and then i'll tell you go ahead and it starts around 13 seconds in uh, uh, okay so. string orchestra i found it and i gotta turn the volume down because there's an ad we and this wanna... is the piece that randall is most known for in the band world oh, and wow. there's actually okay. a series of them that get progressively harder now there's the string version yeah so the band version is harder than the string version um, no, I'd actually, the string version is probably harder than the band version, but I'm um, just getting the key, but the, um, I think I put it in G minor. Okay. Um, but, uh, there are, there's, this is Santa the Barbarian Here and then comes. next year you'll probably see the next, there's of a series of them. When the winter winds blew in an age long ago and the Yuletide season brought darkness and snow. That's cool. They wrote to the gift giver in poems antiquarian. 
From the icy wastelands came Santa the Barbarian. A Trans Siberian vibe to yeah, it, it does. a little bit. Um, it's it's a lot of fun. Yeah, um, that's a cool, and I, and I like the the narration. You got to you got to get a someone with a good a good voice. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah like Michael Jackson's Thriller or something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Very cool. That's an awesome piece. Uh, definitely check that. And th what is that graded? Uh, that one is a two. I two. Believe. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. yeah. It looks. It looks very accessible. Um, but it's one of those really, really fun pieces that you could do the winter concert. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Very neat. Um, what else? Anything else or? Oh sure. No, I'll tell you about anything. <laughs> but, um, so yeah, no, I'm really, I'm really excited about this catalog. I mean, we we do have we have composers that you know already, like um, Karen Neidhold, for example, um, mm -hmm. has a really cool rock tune. Um, one I'll have you uh, maybe pull up right now is called Fragile. Um, that uh, uh, is also Randall, but I want, uh, there's a reason why I want to show you that one. Um, so while you're pulling that up, um, so we have some newer composers. I mean, we have this one composer that wrote the most gorgeous kind of heart wrenching, but also hopeful piece called Of Love and Loss. And this kid is was 15 years old when he wrote it. He's oh, wow. 17 now. Um, and it, it was written for his brother who only lives seven days old. I mean, it's just, it's just gorgeous. And it's just, it's really neat to see, you know, again, any age, you know, mm -hmm. as far as diversity goes as well. Um, so that's kind of cool. Um, the piece Fragile is part of Randall's um, uh, Unbroken project, which is a project on um, discussing mental health and bringing that to um, an accessible way, you know, through yeah. music and yeah. he has pieces at different levels. Um, this one's, it's graded at two and a half. I'd say it's probably more for your three plus, um, okay. you know, orchestras yeah. um, just because it is very, um, you know, expressive right. um, yeah. you know, in that yeah. way. Um, it has a little bit of an aleatoric section where like the anxiety is building up, um, you know, mm -hmm. and you can feel it, you can feel the anxiety through the music. It's very, very neat. But then there's also hopeful melodies, um, and a viola solely because oh, you know, okay. violas are violas, awesome. right? Yeah. <laughs> um, okay. I have it pulled up. So we're going to yeah. take a listen to fragile Randall Standridge. It's a great two and a half slash three ish. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's, that's normally how it works, right? Yeah, exactly. the piano. It just makes me cry yeah, every time. Yeah. <laughs> it just makes me Absolutely cry. Absolutely beautiful. What a beautiful piece. Yeah. yeah. Very nice. Well, so. yeah, definitely uh, some some to check out and uh, great great music, great music. Yeah. So that's what's going on over there. Um, I guess we just do one more quick one that's sure. not that catalog. Um, I have a new one out with um, in Brian's catalog, the Make Music catalog called uh, G Street Rock. Um, and the goal of this one is getting kids, um, feeling comfortable. Is this by you or is this by yes, Brian? Yes, by me. This okay. is by me. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. Um, and it's, um, G Street Rock, it's, uh, the goal is to make, help kids improvise. So it's a one page piece of music, but on the back is an improv guide. Wonderful. So it, we're, and so like, if you are personally not super comfortable with improvisation, like it'll make it accessible to anybody you know mm -hmm. um and so you can go through just simple rhythmic you know exercises or it gives you the guide notes and how to create your own solo it gives you some sample solos and things like that yeah. but it also is a is just a piece for teaching kids g-string and getting yeah. more comfortable for g-string uh, improvisation is something that uh 
a lot of kids don't get much of and mm-hmm. or ever. And uh, I know growing up, I didn't know anything about it until really I was in my second year teaching and I had an amazing band director who um, inspired me to learn and just learn from him. And um, so now for me, it's really important with, for my kids. I want them to know um, that that's another part of music that a lot mm-hmm. of them don't get to see, you know, and um, being able to do both, both sides. Um, we had our uh, spring trip this year, and I may have mentioned it a little bit before in a podcast with uh, uh, we went to Asheville, North Carolina from Atlanta mm-hmm. and uh, worked with Christian Howes, mm-hmm. who uh, w- what better person to learn uh, creative string playing. And it wasn't just about improvisation. It was just about opening yourself up and being free. Um, and it was remarkable and it really changed a lot of my kids' mindsets. And, um, I- I'm really excited about what, where, where that has taken them. So yes, improv is great. G street rock. I got pulled up here and, um, by Katie. <laughs> and this is like a grade one, so mm-hmm. very accessible. Very cool. Yeah. yeah. And That's great, uh, great learning of G string notes on that one, you know? Yeah. And everybody gets them, even the first violin. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And uh, uh, I'm just looking at the score. It's, it's, it's perfect for that um, mid to end of the year where you're, we need to reinforce those G string notes because mm-hmm. violins, if they don't use it enough, they're like, what are those notes way down there? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. It's perfect. Exactly. That's perfect. Well, and that's it. what I'm always trying to do is like find those little, little gems of, okay, what are they missing? Mm-hmm. You know, in other pieces or in or in the methods or whatever. Yeah, I mean, we can't do it all all the time, but you know, it's I great. Put it's it wonderful. In here and there. So, very yeah. cool piece. Very cool piece. I I'm working. I'm going to be working. I have worked with a lot of composers, but to be able to put my um, iPad screen up on the on the feed too, and and then also maybe work on the audio of the guest to be able to be heard on the live stream. <laughs> I don't right. know what happened. I, I didn't change any. Set, I swear I didn't change any settings from last <laughs> the last time I did it. So I think it's my um, my hardware got a firmware update and may have tweaked something. So check that out. No worries. <laughs> well, uh, Katie, it has been uh, amazing to have you on the podcast, and uh, everybody needs to check out um, your website at uh, is it it's uh, katieoharalabree dot com. Mm-hmm. Right. Yep. And make sure that you get it right. It's not. I, I messed it up at the beginning. It's not O'Hare like Chicago second favorite airport. It is right. O'Hara like Scarlett O'Hara. Right. There you go. Yeah. With the Whose first name is Katie. <laughs> and Katie, right? Yeah. yeah. Well, no, but Scarlett's first name is Katie. It's Irving. oh, that's right. So, oh, Katie Scarlett. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. I didn't. Yeah. I guess I didn't know that. My wife probably knew that. She's a big fan <laughs> of the uh, of the movie. That's her favorite. Uh, but yeah. thank you so much for being here. It's just been a super pleasure to. Um, have you and learn about um, your your great compositions and and all that uh, you've you've done. Um, you're awesome and uh, oh, well, the rising you. star of the <laughs> of the uh, orchestra compositional world here. So everybody check it out. Um, she got publications uh, with all the publishers pretty much, and uh, <laughs> it's so so wonderful. But um, I hope that you have a great rest of the summer. And um, any uh, any final thoughts or words or. Oh, no, I audience. think I think you said it best. Have a great <laughs> summer. I'm, I'm, I, we still have, like, I guess, a couple more days. My husband's a band director, and oh. so and my son's ten, so they have uh, two and a half days left. So oh, oh, oh they're still in school. <laughs> yeah, they're oh, still boy. in school. Oh boy, yeah. I guess I guess I I take it for granted that we were out before Memorial Memorial Day. Yeah. But we also I have to go back to school in July, yeah. uh, and then the kids come back the first of August. So yeah, um, it's a little different here, but. It works out. Everything works. It's the same number of days. It's just different how you how you put it together. But uh, thanks, everybody. And I'm going to work on this audio for tomorrow. Tomorrow, uh, 10 o'clock, uh, 11 o'clock a.m., we have um, Adam Gresham, who uh, we had on episode 40, and we talked to him right before he started his first year as a string teacher, moving over from the band world as a percussionist. 
uh, and now he finished his first year very successfully. We're going to talk to him about uh, what went well and some of his challenges and, and all the great things that he did. And then, of course, we have the Dr. Rebecca McLeod, our AFTA president, and uh, just amazing string extraordinaire from everything. She she does it all. Uh, and we're going to be talking with her at one o'clock, uh, hopefully hopefully all live streamed and hopefully all working with the audio uh, fine. But we will get this uh, out uh, on the YouTube channel uh, today and uh, for everybody to enjoy. But thank you, Katie, again. We appreciate you. Thank you, Charles. All, all right. right. We will see you all very soon back here on the Orchestra Teacher Podcast. Thank you for tuning in. For resources and more information, visit orchestrateacher.net.